All right. Question number two is from current electricity. It says heater of electric kettle is made of wire of length L and diameter D. Correspondingly, let the resistance be R. It takes 4 minutes to raise the temperature of this much water by 40 Kelvin. That means connected to a voltage supply V square by R. Time is in 4 minutes. That is a total heat and is equal to MC delta theta question number 1. This heater is replaced by new heater having two wires of same material length and diameter 2D. That means the resistance will be R by 4 because the cross sectional area will be 4 times. How much time in minutes will it take to raise the temperature of same water? That means mass is same and the temperature rise is also same. The time is given in minutes and these are the option whether the wires are connected in parallel or series. So for the first case let me take if they are connected in parallel then quite obviously it would be V square by resistance. The resistance of each wire is R by 4. So quite obviously if they are in parallel that would be R by 8, the time is T and that will be equals to MC delta theta, that is equation number 2. And if they are connected in series, V square R by 4, R by 4 in series would be R by 2 and the time is T dash would be equals to MC delta theta. So comparing these three you would see you will get a correct option of B and D. Now we will move to question number 3. Question number 3 is from ray optics and it is something like this a glass cylinder of refractive index 1.5 and there is a thin uniform film of refractive index 1.4. Notice the word uniform. That means thickness here, 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 everywhere the thickness is same. Now the question says paraxial rays from air to glass get focused at F1 while from glass to air get focused at F2. So we got to find the relation. So let me go for the calculation when the focal length is F1 which is the focal length when rays travel from air to glass. So you have to go stepwise first from air to film. I have the formula N2 by V minus N1 by U is N2 minus N1 by R. So first situation let us say is air to film. I have 1.4 because this would be N1 this would be N2 then by V1 minus 1 by infinity is 1.4 minus 1 and the radius would be plus r. So for this particular calculation you would see that this is 1.4 by v1 is 0 0.4 by r and it implies v1 is equal to this is 14 by 4 that means 7 by 2R. But V1 is the intermediate image you may call the image form when rays travel from air to film and F1 is the final image when it travels from film to glass. So for that N2 would be 1.5 and V itself is the focal length and minus N1 would be 1.4 and U would obviously be 7R by 2, the image of first is the object of second, is equal to N2 minus N1, so that will be 0 0.1 and the radius would again be plus R. Because the rays travelling in this direction according to the sign convention from pole to the centre. This will give you F1 is equal to 3R. Likewise in the second case you got to travel from here. So first consider from glass to film 
and then film to air and that will give you the answer F2 and on calculation it will be 2R. So question number 3 will have options E and C. Let's see question number 4. Question number 4 is from the chapter sound and it's been brought from experimental physics. Resonance column experiment tuning fork has this much frequency and the column has gas. The minimum height at which resonance occurs is this much meter. Then we have to predict the gas. To make the calculation easier this value has been given, this has been given and all the molar mass has been kept in gram and even to further simplify like say it's if the gas is neon then you'll be requiring this data where molar mass is 20 and 10 by 20 is 7 by 10 but you have to see that this mass has to be kept in gram. So the question comes in this way velocity is lambda into f and we know the minimum height is the situation when length equals to lambda by 4 so lambda will be 4L into F. So given the value of length and given the frequency you can find what is the velocity of sound in that gas. To equate it then you would see V equals to root of gamma RT by M. So, for example, you find speed from the first data and now you are verifying whether it is neon or not. Let me show it to you. For the case of neon, gamma obviously would be 5 by 3 because neon being monoatomic, R temperature T and mass as we have said is to be kept that mass 20 is in gram. So, 20 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. The calculation comes out to be very very simple if you put on all this data then you can easily verify for neon. Likewise put the respective value for gamma for nitrogen and m for nitrogen and you can check whether it matches with the first option or not and in all the calculation you would get option number D to be correct. Okay. Question number 5, it is from rotational motion and the ladder problem. There is a ladder of mass m and at an angle theta with the horizontal coefficient friction here is mu 2, here is mu 1 and the normal reaction here is n 2 and here n 1. And the question says if the ladder is about to slip that means limiting friction acts everywhere. So if we at all make the free body diagram this is mg, this is n1 it has a tendency to slip down so mu1 n1 this is n2 and quite obviously slipping here so this will have mu2 n2 here and based on different conditions of mu we got to answer. The first one is here mu 1 0 mu 2 non 0 and we got to see in that way but out of this you could see one option is already eliminated B. B can never happen. It is a very normal situation that when the ground is smooth the ladder cannot be at equilibrium because you could see there is no force to balance n1. So b is already eliminated now we got to see with this option. First let me solve when both places friction exists. In that situation you could see if I use translational equilibrium then n1 would be equals to mu to n2 and you would get another situation n2 plus mu1 n1 equals to mg. So this is translatory equilibrium along x and y respectively and when you solve this this easily gives you option number c. Then a and d is related when mu1 is 0 
so the friction is not there the equation would be if this is 0 let's see along x I'll have n1 as mu to n2 along y I'll be having n2 equals to mg and let's even use the rotational equilibrium I can write torque about any point so let me write here so that will give me n1 l sin theta is mg l by 2 cos theta writing torque about this point very straightforward and this will lead to option number d so that was about question number 5 let's move to question number 6 question number 6 is from current electricity and quite tricky if current in R2 would be 0 that means current for this register is 0 and we got to see the possible option now let us hit it in a single blow if current is 0 this PD would be 0 then current through this would be V1 by R1 similarly if this current is 0 PD across R3 would be V2 and that would be V2 by R3 so these are the current through R1 and R3 provided current through R2 is 0 but then also realize the current through this and current through this is equal because it is the same current looping if the current through R2 is 0. So basis this you would see the correct option would be ABD and that is immaterial of the value of R2. Question number 7. 